The Edmonton Oilers officially win the season series with the Vegas Golden Knights and in doing so move within four points of first place in the Pacific Division. The win over Vegas was big in itself, but in the absence of an Oilers superstar, it felt even bigger. We'll get to that, but first, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Prior to last night, Edmonton and Vegas had two previous meetings this season, with the Oilers beating Vegas 5-4 in a shootout in November and Vegas beating Edmonton 3-1 on home ice back on February 6th. However, the build-up to their third game of the season was marred by a little bit of concern for Edmonton's captain. On Tuesday, it was announced Connor McDavid would be out day-to-day -day with a lower body injury. Chris Knobloch established prior to last night's game that Connor McDavid was going to be the one to make the decision on when he played and when he did not. TSN reporter Ryan Rashog said Tuesday that the priority for the team and the player will to be 100% healthy going into the playoffs. That's rather than getting McDavid back in the lineup potentially too early for some regular season games. NHL insider Chris Johnston also said on TSN yesterday that he'd be surprised if McDavid doesn't play for the rest of the regular season. Johnston pointed out the difficulty of the Oilers' schedule from here on out, with Edmonton playing five games between tomorrow and Thursday, April 18th, a stretch of time which includes two back-to-backs. In terms of personal accomplishments, McDavid has already reached 130 points for the season, but is one assist shy of reaching 100. Although the 100 assist mark is still something that looks like Connor McDavid very well could easily hit this season. The injury probably does take him out of the Art Ross Trophy race. Nikita Kucherov and Nathan McKinnon have already pulled clear in McDavid's brief absence. Kucherov's got 139, McKinnon 137 to McDavid's 130. Games between the Edmonton Oilers and the Vegas Golden Knights have felt a little bit different this year, and they likely will for the foreseeable future, which is always the case between two teams that have just played an intense high-stakes playoff series. The prospect of the Oilers facing Vegas without McDavid in the lineup was definitely not an alluring one, especially given that Edmonton are still chasing Vancouver for first place in the Pacific. Without McDavid, the rest of the team obviously was going to have to step up offensively to help fill the void. Aiden Hill looked sharp early on, perhaps making his best save off of a Ryan Nugent Hopkins effort right here. There was nothing Hill could have done about the next Oilers chance though. Darnell Nurse's point shot was deflected wide of the net by Ryan McLeod, but there goes Cody Cece pinching down from the line. He gets the puck on the right wing boards and throws it towards the net. It redirects past Aiden Hill off the skate of Alec Martinez to make it 1-0. The Oilers would get a puck past Hill one more time in the first period, but Leon Dreisaitl couldn't find the back of the net with his effort just hitting the goalpost and going wide. Matthias Ekholm would take a smart cross-ice feed from Ryan McLeod early in the second period and hammer a slap shot past the glove of Hill to make it 2-0 Edmonton before Zach Hyman would add a third to make it 3-0 Oilers. That's Hyman's 53rd of the year. Leon Dreisaitl found Ryan Nugent Hopkins in the slot for that one. His shot produced the rebound that Hyman would capitalize on. The Oilers in total outshot Vegas 25-18 in the game and thanks to that had the majority of the grade-A scoring chances. But that's not to say that Stuart Skinner didn't have any big tests and he answered the call on each of them to keep the Oilers in the lead. Edmonton would make it 4-0 on a third period 5-on-3 thanks to a one-timer from Leon Dreisaitl in the right circle. Yeah, that kind of goal again, the inevitable one as I said last time. That made it 4-0 Edmonton. After the 5-on-3 goal, the power play had a, well, we'll call it a rare moment of disaster. Keegan Colasar breaking through and scoring on a shorthanded breakaway to make things 4-1. But Dylan Holloway would score a wraparound just over two minutes later to make it 5-1 for the Oilers. Ryan McLeod and Ryan Nugent Hopkins ended up two of the games as three stars thanks to two points each. And as I mentioned before, the win meant the Oilers win the season series against the Vegas Golden Knights. Hyman and Drysaddle would notch two points each as well, and the Holloway goal, in all honesty, further exemplified what I think is the biggest takeaway from this game. You have Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, and Drysaddle combining for six points in McDavid's absence, and that was great to see, but the combined two goals and four points from Cody CC, Dylan Holloway, and Ryan McLeod provided further reason to not only be reassured by the Oilers' ability to still compete and still score without McDavid, but also gives the Oilers some reassurance in that the depth can step up as well. I'm going to paint a picture for you. Picture the playoff series against the Los Angeles Kings, Vancouver Canucks, or Nashville Predators. That, as of right now, look like the three teams that the Oilers could hypothetically face in the first two rounds of the playoffs. On those teams are Anze Kopitar, Philip Deneau, Elias Lindholm, JT Miller, Elias Pettersson, and Ryan O'Reilly, six centermen who all have the ability to be strong defensively and all have the ability to shut down a superstar. 
Connor McDavid naturally soaks up a huge amount of attention from the best the opponent has to offer, but knowing that if Connor McDavid's scoring is stunted in the playoffs, that everyone else can pick up the load is a major reassurance for Edmonton heading into the postseason. Since the last episode of Oilers Digest where we talked about the Pacific Division race, the Vancouver Canucks have played twice, earning three of a possible four points from those two games. They beat Vegas thanks to a very impressive performance on Monday, with Connor Garland notching a pair of goals in a game that Vegas led 2-0 and 3-2 before the Canucks were able to win 4-3. The Canucks again mounted a comeback yesterday against the Arizona Coyotes, erasing a 3-1 third period deficit to force overtime, but couldn't finish the job thanks to Dylan Gunther setting up Logan Cooley for a winner, a duo that show how much promise and potential that Salt Lake City are going to have moving forward. Vancouver's results mean they currently sit four points ahead of the Edmonton Oilers for first in the Pacific. The Oilers, however, still have two games in hand. If Edmonton can, if Edmonton can beat Arizona on Friday, a regulation win over Vancouver on Saturday would put the two teams level on 105 points each, with Edmonton notably still having a game in hand. Last thing for today is a look at the Pacific Division standings and a look potentially ahead to the Stanley Cup playoffs for the Edmonton Oilers. I'll pull up for you right now. Here are the Pacific Division standings. The Canucks threw 79 games with 105 points. The Oilers threw 77 games with 101 points. The Kings threw 78 games with 93 points. And then right behind, 92 points and 78 games for the Vegas Golden Knights. You'll see them down in the second wildcard position. Those are the four teams from the Pacific Division that are still in the playoff hunt. The four teams that will likely make the playoffs, the St. Louis Blues, three points back of the Vegas Golden Knights with three games remaining could technically still take that second wild card spot. The Edmonton Oilers pretty much know that they're going to have home ice advantage in at least the first round of the playoffs. The only way they wouldn't is if the Los Angeles Kings win out and the Edmonton Oilers lose out. Los Angeles with 93 points, eight points back with four games to go, of course. So Edmonton just need one more point or they need the Los Angeles Kings to lose a game in any manner and they are assured of home ice advantage in the first round the vegas golden knights of course beat the oilers in the playoffs last season and what's very important to note is that them being in the second wildcard position right now and the dallas stars having 109 points in first in the central mean that vegas would actually end up in the central division bracket because Vancouver is the second of the top two, or sorry, the second of the division leaders as of right now, they'd play the first wildcard team, meaning that Vancouver would have the Nashville Predators. Vegas would play Dallas. If Vegas plays Dallas, they're in the central division side of the bracket. That means that the winner of Vegas-Dallas would play the winner of Colorado-Winnipeg in the first round of the playoffs. Nashville would play Vancouver. The winner of that series would play the winner of Edmonton-Los Angeles if, of course, the playoffs started today. Why is that important? Well, the Edmonton Oilers probably don't want to play the Vegas Golden Knights again. Thomas Hurdle just came back, and they're going to have Mark Stone in the playoffs. A fully healthy Vegas team is scary, especially with Aiden Hill and goal a proven commodity after he won the Stanley Cup last year. Vegas ending up in the central division side of the bracket means that at the earliest, the Oilers would face the Golden Knights in the conference final and wouldn't have to go through Vegas to get out of the Pacific. I don't know about you, but if they beat Los Angeles playing either Vancouver or Nashville sounds a lot better than having to play Vegas in the second round. Of course, all that is still to be determined. We don't know if these standings are going to stay the same. Vancouver could go on a run past Dallas and then have to play Vegas in the first round. All of a sudden, Vegas is back in the Pacific Division. Vegas could pass the Los Angeles Kings. All of a sudden, it's LA, Dallas, Vegas against Edmonton in the first round. The Golden Knights and the Oilers could still play a first round. There could be a lot of other things that play out as we look at these standings, but I just wanted to give you guys a playoff update in terms of who the Edmonton Oilers could be facing. As of right now, it's the Los Angeles Kings or the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round if they finish second, and that second round is going to be a huge question mark. Vancouver, as of right now, are first in the Pacific, but they're not playing very well. So we'll see if A, Edmonton can catch Vancouver for first, or B, if potentially an upset is on the cards in the first round of the playoffs. If that's the case for the Vancouver Canucks, then it would be the Edmonton Oilers in the second round against potentially the Nashville Predators, and I like that matchup a lot. There's a lot of hypotheticals, and all the answers are only going to come when we get into the playoffs, which is not too far away. Thanks so much for tuning into Oilers Digest today.